laughing in the background. Okay, so this is a video about the multiple choice portion of your Unit 3 test in AP Calculus. We start off with trying to find the derivative of this product of two functions. We have an f function and we have a g function. We're going to call f the x function, just x. And sine is going to be your g. So if we're going to find the derivative, this looks like a perfect opportunity to apply the product rule, which says we take the derivative of the first thing times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. f prime g plus f g prime, okay? So pause the video, go ahead and do that. We'll be right back. Okay, scanning our answer choices for sine x, x cosine x, we get, oh look, it's right there, b. Done. <coughs> nope, that's not b. Oh, it's multiple choice question? That is b <coughs> right there, okay? All right, moving right along. Here we have, Another function, it has a linear um, aspect. Ooh, and it has a natural log aspect. Okay, so when we take the derivative, we're gonna do this piece by piece. So what's the derivative of seven x? Seven. seven plus the derivative of negative three is zero. So we're gonna have to add derivative of natural log of x is one over x times the natural log of e which we should know is one, so this does not contribute anything to our value. Okay, so now we wanna plug in one. Seven plus one over one is eight. So there we are, the answer to the second question is E eight. All right, moving right along. So here we have ourselves a very strange looking um, function. It is something raised to the fifth power. Okay, so we're gonna definitely be applying the chain rule to this excellent problem. Okay, which means we're gonna first take the derivative of the outside thing, which is a fifth degree polynomial. So that is five times whatever that stuff is to the fourth power. Okay, so we are not changing this inner thing yet. It is staying x cubed minus cosine x. Okay, so we are just taking the derivative of our power first, and now, now we can multiply it by the derivative of our inner, right, the inner part. The outer part was x to the fifth, and the inner part is now x cubed minus cosine. So piece by piece, what is the derivative of x cubed? 3x to the second power minus the derivative of cosine is negative sign, and because x doesn't have anything here, it's just gonna stay. So our minus the minus becomes a plus inside there. So let's see, we have five times these parentheses things to the fourth power, x cubed minus cosine x, times, it looks like three x squared plus sine x. Hmm, do we see any of that stuff here? No, 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 oh. Oh. Yes, so E is the answer. This is a plus down here, by the way, not a divided by, okay? So whenever we have parentheses raised to a power, okay, you are gonna be doing the chain rule. We'll take the derivative of the power using the power rule, and then we will derive whatever's inside until we've taken the derivative of everything. Okay, so there we go with that one, chain rule, pretty nice. Okay, let's see what else. Oh, here is a nice one. We have two functions. This is our f, is a square root function. This is our g. It says, what is the derivative of this composition? Which means, take the g function and plug it into the f. So we are gonna first take our g function and plug it into the f. So our composition is the square root of something squared minus four, and that something is three x minus two. Okay, so this looks like it's gonna be wonderful, but look how easy the answers look, because we have to plug in x equals three, which means you probably don't have to simplify this all the way down to its simplest form, because it's not a, right, it's a, it's a plug-in, plug-in chug. So let's do the derivative. 
So first we work from the outside. The outside is a square root function. Okay, so if you remember, if f is the square root of a value, then the derivative is one over two times the square root of that, times the derivative of your radicand. Okay, so that's where it might get a little bit tricky. So first of all, the derivative of f, f prime of g, let's go back, I wrote that funny, is one over two times the square root of all this stuff. So we're not even gonna mess with it. 3x minus two squared minus four. Okay, all that. Now we have to take the derivative of all this stuff underneath your radical. So it starts with taking the derivative of 3x minus two squared, which is two <coughs> times 3x minus two to the first power, but we don't ever have to write a one power, times three, right? Because that's the derivative of the inside inside, 3x minus two. Okay, now the minus four here doesn't contribute anything, so we don't really have to worry about that. Okay, so now before I plug in, before I plug in a three, I'm gonna do a little bit of simplifying. Um, I can write the two, two times three, or I can do that, it's two times three. That's six in my numerator. Six times three x minus two all over two roots of all this stuff. Okay, so now I could do some more simplifying, but let's just plug in x equals three. Okay, so plugging in our three leads us to this, 42 over two root 45. Is that one of our options? Dang it, no it's not. Okay, so let's simplify some more. I can, oh, two, and that's a 21, right? 21 over root 45, that's pretty good. Is that anything? No. No? Okay, so then 45, mm, 45 is nine times five, yes? Nine times five, so nine, the square root of nine is three, times root five. Ooh, so now I can do this and make it a seven. Do I see seven over root five? Yes. Is that, oh, there it is. There it is, seven over root five is our answer. Okay, looking at number five, here is our function. It is a rational function. Okay, and it says, what points? Notice it says points, so chances are there's gonna be more than one, that have the line tangent have a slope of one half. Okay, so a slope in calculus, you need to remember that's the derivative. Okay, so slope stands for f prime, the derivative. So we are gonna have to take the derivative of our function and see when it equals one half, okay? So this is a quotient rule derivative. So we take the low, which is x plus two, and times it by the derivative of the high, plus the high times the derivative of the low, so the derivative of x plus two is just one also, all over the low value squared. Low d high, sorry this is a minus, low d high minus high d low over low low. So minus goes here. It's minus because that's the formula. Low d high minus high d low over low low. That is the quotient rule formula. So we have x plus two minus x in the numerator and x plus two squared in the denominator. So this x and that x subtract and I'm left with two over x plus two squared. So that is the equation for my slope, right? The equation for the derivative. Now I am told that the slope is gonna be one half. So I need to set up this equation where I can solve this for x now, and I can figure out what the x values are where the slope is one half. Okay, so algebra says we cross multiply whenever we have equal fractions. So four equals, I'm going to multiply this out. Right, I am actually squaring x plus two and getting this equation. 
So my 4 can subtract to this side, and I have 0 equals x squared plus 4x. Okay, so you should know that now we're going to have a common factor, right? Both of these have a multiplier of x, so I'm going to factor out that common multiplier so that I have x equals 0 or x equals negative 4 as my solutions to this quadratic equation. So x equals 0 or x equals negative 4, okay? which is great. Now I have both the x-coordinates for my points. Okay, my points. So what if, what if x was 0? Then plugging back into y, a 0 gives me um, 0 over 0 plus 2, which is 0. So one of my points where the slope is 1 half is 0, 0. Okay, so I know x equals 0 for my solution here, so the point is 0, 0. Now what if x is negative 4? then the y is negative 4 over negative 4 plus 2. Right? It's the same formula. I'm plugging into here a value of negative 4 to find the y value that goes with it, which is negative 4 over negative 2, which is a y value of positive 2. Okay, so I have the point negative 4 comma 2 as one of the places where the slope is 1 half, and I have the point 0, 0, another place where the slope is one half. So the answer to this multiple choice question is C. From a quotient rule to setting up and solving a slope equation, right? the derivative is the slope equals the given slope, cross multiply, solve for x, plug it back in and solve for y. Okay, this next one, notice the words that it says. It says the words inverse function. Okay, inverse function. So that means we're going to be finding f inverse, right, f inverse of x prime. Whenever it says inverse, this is what we're going to be finding, f inverse of x prime. Okay, so in this case, our value, our y value is going to be 1 because that's what they're calling. So they're just calling g prime the inverse of f, right? Um, g is the inverse function of f. They do that so they don't have to do the f and the f inverse derivative, right? That kind of stuff. It gets kind of sloppy. So this is how you're going to see it on the AP test and how it's tested. So number one, we have to find the x value, right? This is what we do every time we have an inverse problem. We find the x value. Now, normally we would plug y equals 1 right here, okay? Because that's what our g prime was, right? g prime of 1. But in addition, we're already told that when y is 1, x is 0 in your problem. Okay? So we could either calculate that by solving this equation, when is it equal 1, or we can know that the x value is 0 right from right here. f of 0 equals 1. This is your x value. This is your y value. So we already know that x equals 0. Step number 2. Find f prime. Take the derivative. So here's our function. It is something to the third power. So once again, we're going to use the chain rule in order to take the derivative. <coughs> so that's 3 times 2x plus 1 to the second power times the derivative of the inner stuff, which is just 2. Okay, the inner stuff is just 2. <coughs> Now we want to know what happens when x equals 0. Right? We want to find f of 0. So we plug 0 into here. And we get some, um, let's see, what is that? That's 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1 squared is 3 times 2, which is 6. So the slope of our line at 0 is 6. Okay, good to know. Because our last step is simply to reciprocate that value. Reciprocate. So g inverse of 1, which is the same thing as f inverse of 1 prime, right, prime, is equal to 1 over 6. So whenever you see the words inverse, know you have to do these steps. Find the x value, find the derivative, and plug the x value in, 
and then reciprocate that slope that you find from your x value. Okay, so this is your classic um, form where it just is asking you to find the derivative of this. Okay, so this is our quotient, or our difference quotient. Okay, where it just says, what is the derivative of natural log sine of x? Okay, so we're gonna take this as a chain rule problem. We're first taking the natural log of something. What's the derivative of natural log? One over x. One over whatever that something is. So in this case, our x, our x is sine. So the natural log of sine x is one over sine x times the derivative of sine x, which is cosine x. So one over sine x times cosine x, you should know is cosine over sine, which is better known as cotan. Okay, let's see what else we got. We have, this is just, we're just trying to find the sine of pi. Just the sine of pi. The sine of pi, the limit, the limit of sine x evaluated at pi over two. So, what is the derivative of sine? Cosine. So what's the cosine at pi over two? Zero. So is that an answer? Yes, the answer is zero. Okay, so these ones you have to recognize. What are you being asked to do? It is a super simple question if you know what it is asking you. This one is asking you to find the derivative of natural log sine x. This is asking you to find the derivative of sine at pi over 2. All right, with the equation of the normal line, to the graph of this is okay normal you need to know normal means perpendicular so we're finding the slope oh look it says the slope is two perfect yes it says that the slope dy dx remember dy dx means y prime y prime means slope so they're telling us exactly what that slope is so we know that the slope is negative one half the slope is negative one half. That's normal, normal to this slope. Yeah. Okay, so we need to figure out what the x point is and we need to figure out what the y point is. That's the information that we don't know. The negative one half is okay. the slope? Negative one half is the perpendicular, aka normal slope. Yes, so what we do have is we have an equation that we can take the derivative of and then we can sit that equal here. Yes, e to the two x. So which one do you use? Do you use the so we're going to use the e to the x derivative formula, which is itself the derivative of e to the 2x is e to the 2x times 2, the derivative of your power. So the derivative of e to the 2x is itself times 2. So 2 e to the 2x. So 2 e to the 2x. Now we know the y value is 2 here, the slope is 2, so we replace y prime, the slope, with 2, and now we have this nice equation that we can solve for x. We divide both sides by 2, which we give 1 equals e to the 2x, and now we have an exponential equation. So from pre-cal, you should know to solve an exponential, we natural log both sides. Now, the natural log of 1, we should know, and if you don't, I'm sorry, but it is 0 is the natural log of 1. And then we divide both sides by 2, and we find out that our x value has got to be 0. So now we know x is 0, we have to go back, 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 and figure out what y is. So y is e to the 2 times 0, which is e to the 0, which is 1. So our y value is 1, our x value is 0, and our slope is minus 1 half. So we have y minus 1 equals negative 1 half x plus 0. Now, that's not this one. That's not this one. That's not that one, which means it has to be a. 
So we get A by distributing negative one half X and then adding one to both sides to get this nice um, slope intercept equation. All right, our last page. So here we wanna find the derivative when X is pi over two. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a hint that whenever you see this notation, whenever you see this, you stop and you rewrite it like this. Okay, that is my advice to you that when you see a square on a trig, you stop and you write it as the whole entire thing raised to the second power so that you do not mess yourself up. And we're still multiplying it by five. Okay, mm -hmm. so now when I take the derivative, I'm going to first apply the power to the two. So the two comes in front. Two times the cosine of pi minus x to the first power, right? And now I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the cosine, which is negative sine, of pi minus x. And now I have to multiply by the derivative of this, which is negative 1. So we have a negative 1 times a negative sign, that's a positive. I have a 5 times 2, that's a 10. So 10 times the cosine of pi minus x times the sine of pi minus x. Now, we are told that x is pi over 2, so let's simplify and do all of our nice math with our unit circle. So when all that comes together, we get um, an answer of 0, because the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and the sine of pi over 2 is 1, times 10 is still 0. Okay, for what value of k does this function have a normal line whose slope is negative 1 fifth? So if the slope of the normal line is 1 fifth, that means our slope, which is y prime, is equal to 5. So we need to take the derivative, or the g prime, we need to take the derivative of this function, which I believe is going to be k times e to the 2x times 2. Okay, because that's how we do an exponential with the base of e, plus 3, since that's 3x's here. Okay, so now we know that the slope is 5. So let's write this in best form. So this is going to be 2 times ke to the 2x plus 3. So we'll minus 3 from both sides. 2 equals 2ke to the 2x. We'll divide both sides by 2. 1 equals k times e to the 2x. So now I have this idea that I have an exponential here that I'm going to probably have to take the natural log of both sides. So that's natural log both sides. Natural log gets rid of the e but not the k. The natural log of 1 is 0. k times 2x. Hang on a second. k times 2x. But here it says x equals 1 x is 1. So I guess we could have plugged 1 in anywhere along the line. So I just plugged it in there. So 2k equals 0. So k, nope, that's not right. Let's go back. Pause for a second. Let me get the eraser out. I should have plugged 1 in way over here. Okay, so if you're following along, erase all that stuff. Let's come back. Let's come back to here. Okay, so we're gonna have a, an e, a k, an x value of one. Plug in one in right there. Okay, so then minus three, two equals two k e squared. Here we go. Now we're cooking with yeah, so 1 equals k e squared, divide both sides by e squared, and we get a value of k of 1 over e squared. So sorry. Plugging x into 1 way up here is the best option, because then we get e squared, 
and we just have a variable with k. There we are, much better, 1 over e squared. Okay, this just says, look, the derivative is already tan of 2x. What is the derivative at pi over 6? So the tan of 2 times pi over 6 is the tangent at pi over 3. So if we remember our unit circle, okay, pi over 3 is the 60 degree angle. So we have root 3, root 2, 1 half is the x value, and root 3 over 2 is the y value. Tangent is a ratio of the y value over the x value, which just reduces to root 3. Okay, so it tells us that the inverse, right, the derivative of x, and this is asking for the derivative at pi over 6, so it's just plugging it in. Okay, what do we got here? This looks like it's going to be a doozy, but it's basically just a product rule. Okay, so let's set up our product rule. F prime, which is 3, times 3 to the minus 2x, plus 3x times the derivative of our exponential. So that's the exponential itself times the derivative of our power times the natural log of the base. In this case, natural log 3. Okay, so let's see what we get. I'm going to take my negative exponent and put it in the denominator. So 3 over 3 to the positive 2x. Plus, I'm going to do the same thing here since this is all multiplication. I am multiplying. So I'm doing a positive 3 times a negative 2, which is a negative 6, times the natural log of 3, right? It's all times, all over 3 to the positive 2x. Okay, so let's see what does that give me. If I combine my like terms on top, I have 3 minus 6 ln 3 all over 3 to the 2x power. Now, which one of these looks most like that? Um, I'm looking at C. It looks like C is the best option. What they've done is they have factored out the 3 from that numerator, right, since both of these have a multiplier of 3. And they've written it like this. So C is the best answer there. Log base 5 of this um, polygon. Okay, so we got to remember the logs, right? The, um, it's, uh, for the logs, it's 1 over whatever your argument is. So 5x plus 1 to the fourth power. Okay, 1 over that times the derivative of this, okay, which is a big thing. We have to first do, right, chain rule. So we do the power. We bring the power down, and it's to the third power now. Multiplied by the derivative of this, right, on the inside. And then it's all over 1 over the natural log of the base of our log. Right, we have log base 5, so it's that. Now here comes the algebra. Notice all of these is numerator, right? This is all over 1. So this is going to be in the numerator of my fraction cubed times 5. I guess I could have multiplied. I'll multiply 5 and 4 together to get 20. I'll just do that. 5 times 4 is 20. We can do that. And on the bottom, I have 5x plus 1 to the fourth power times a natural log of 5. Now, here's the awesome part about this problem. There are three of these 5x minus 1s up there, and there are four of them down here. So all three on the top cancel out with four of them on the bottom, and I'm left with 20 over... 5x plus 1 times the natural log of 5. Okay, there's, that's how we simplify it. At any part, we could have always plugged in 1, so now I'm going to substitute in 1. Right, got to put in 1 for my x value. So this is now a 1. So 5 times 1. 5 times 1 is 5. 5 plus 1 is 6 natural logs of 5. Right, 5 plus 1 is 6. And then I can reduce this to a 10 and a 3. So 10 over the natural log of 5 is what I am getting for my final simplified answer. 
and it looks like that is right here. 10 over 3, natural logs of 5, the answer is A. Okay, so yes, that was a lot. If you need any help, of course, you can always go back and rewind, or you can look for other sites for other videos, but um, you're going to have to know what your derivative rules mean and how you take derivatives, especially chain rule derivatives, okay, chain rules. All right, good luck. Study hard.